Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio. So today, we are looking at a deck which I legitimately believe might be the best deck in the format at the moment. It's not Gardevoir, it's Vika Vault. Tabu Bulu. Not doing this for cheap views, ladies and gentlemen. This is a genuine belief of mine. I think this is an amazing deck. Now, it wasn't the best deck in the format before rotation. It was good, but it wasn't the best deck. What has changed now? Firstly, Hex Maniac has rotated. This deck revolves around Vikavolt and its strong charge ability, attaching a grass and a lightning energy from your deck to your Pokemon in any way that you like. Kinda need to be able to do that to win the game. So people playing Hex Maniac, boo! But now, unless people are playing Garboda, you are not having your ability turned off. Garboda is the only way your ability gets turned off at the moment. Sorry, except for um, Greninja using Shadow Stitching, but look at look at Tapu Bulu's Grass type. Look at Greninja's Grass weakness. I think you'll be okay in that particular matchup. Other than that, you really are rolling. So Garboda is an issue. We'll talk about that as we go through. But Hex Maniac being rotated has made this deck considerably better. The other thing is numbers. At the end of the day, Pokemon Trading Card Game is a game about numbers. It's about being able to hit the right numbers with your Pokemon while trying to stop your opponent hitting the numbers with theirs. And honestly, that's the way we that's where we are at the moment. It's working very well. So the basics of the deck, like I said, you've got Vika Volt Strong Charge, which accelerates energy, and then you've got Tapu Bulu as your main attacker. You strong charge a grass and a lightning onto Tapu Bulu. You attach a grass energy from your hand, and then you've got all the energy you need to use Nature's Judgment or Tapu Wilderness. Nature's Judgment does 120 damage, or you can discard all the energy and do 180. Tapu Wilderness does 150, but heals all damage. Now, you can of course use Choice Band, which means Nature's Judgment is doing 210, and your GX attack is doing 180. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are very important numbers indeed. So, let's have a look at some of the cards we need to be focusing on in the post-rotation build of this deck. Cards that we can use in addition to Tapu Bulu and Vika Vault to make it amazing. First of all, Octillery slash Oranguru. Oranguru. That's the way you pronounce it. And I'm putting my flag squarely in the Octillery camp here. The reason why you need this is twofold. Firstly, N in the late game hurts. And I know that you can just use strong charge anyway, but you know what? You might still need that third energy. You might still need that energy recycler to allow you to strong charge drawing cards is good. But also in the early game, you need to get set up. The biggest weakness of this deck is not getting a turn 2 Vika Vault. You need the turn 2 Vika Vault. So grabbing something like an Oranguru, or an Guru, or an Octillery really helps here. And you're playing Bridget. So grab that Remoraid or Oranguru, boom, pronounced it right first time. And then next turn, you can go with the Octillery, or this turn, you can go with the Oranguru. Because you need to draw extra cards. It's not good enough to just sit there and hope you get the candy Vika Vault. You can hopefully do that just using your extra draw power from one of these cards. Honestly, I like Octillery. I know it's an extra card in your deck. And I know that then you can have the Remoraid or the Octillery prized. So it's more likely one part will be prized and it's an extra card in your deck. But it's so much better. Often you'll be drawing one card with Oranguru. That's three cards with Octillery. That, ladies and gentlemen, makes an awful lot of difference. But of course, you also need to be relying on Heavy Ball. Now, the thing that Heavy Ball does here, very simply, is it allows you to search for your Vika Vault or your Tapu Bulu. They are the two Pokemon for whom you will really need to be searching. You can get both of them with a Heavy Ball. It's too good not to play. And you need to be playing Skylar. Skylar is really crucial here because of Tapu Lele. 
I mean, you need to play Tapu Lele, but, you know, that's in every deck right now. Tapu Lele allows you to search for a supporter card. So what you do, if you've got either Rare Candy or you've got Vika Volt, you use Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag to grab yourself a Skylar, and then you can either grab a Rare Candy to evolve into Vika Volt, or you can grab a Heavy Ball to get a Vika Volt, because you've already got the Rare Candy. Skylar and Heavy Ball in this deck, along with Tapu Lele, are just so good to help you get that turn to Vika Volt. Because if you have an Energy turn one or turn two, and a Tapu Bulu when you get the energy, that's all you need other than a turn two Vika Volt. It is that gosh darned important. Now, you need to be playing Field Blower here. Garboda is an issue. Like I've said, if you get your abilities turned off, it's bad. If you don't get your abilities turned off, then essentially here, either you win or you're playing a deck that specifically counters it. Because that's literally it. It's such a strong deck when you've got Vika Volt going. Garboda is really the only way around this. And for that reason, you know, it is super, super important that you have that Field Blower. Field Blower gets rid of Garboda's item, which turns off Garboda's ability, which gives you your Vika Volt back. So you need to be playing a high count, three or four of these, honestly, in this deck. Now, there is a decision to be made here. Do I go Choice Band or do I go Fighting Fury Belt? I am firmly in the Choice Band camp. I'll explain the numbers in a minute. But in terms of Fighting Fury Belt, yes, it's good against Metagross and Gardevoir. But I'm going to be honest, Gardevoir, you should have a decent matchup anyway. And honestly, Field Blower. I played against the Tapu Bulu Vika Volt. This was pre-rotation with my Gardevoir. And I hit for 180. And I used Text Maniac so they couldn't just discard all their energy and get it back. And then I just waited. And then next turn I dug, found my Field Blower, discarded their Fighting Fury Bout, took a KO mid-turn. Not a huge fan of Fighting Fury Bout. It is great against Metagross, but other than that, you know, meh. And then, of course, Choice Band. And Choice Band's great. Choice Band allows you to hit the numbers. So, Golisopod has got 210 HP. Well, Nature's Judgment discarding the energy, 210 with a Choice Band. One hit KO. Alolan Ninetales has 210 HP. Nature's Judgment discarding the energy with a Choice Band. One hit KO. Guard of One. Now... You can get a one-hit KO on Gardevoir, but it's awkward. You need Nature's Judgment, discarding the energy with a choice band, and a Kukui. Now, I think you should play one Professor Kukui. You can search it out with Tapu Lele, and if you're playing Octillery sooner or later, you'll hit it. But it is a little bit of a pain. But you still can get the one-hit KO. Some games you're going to be able to, and this is going to swing the prize race in your favour beautifully. And then you've got stuff like Darkrai, Dramper, and Volcanion. They've all got 180 HP, so you can actually get the KO with Tapu Wilderness here. Getting a complete heal with your GX attack while getting a one-hit KO, it's too good. You need to be playing cards like Energy Recycler and Brock's Grit. You are going to run low of energy in the mid to late game. That's inevitable. You're kind of using and discarding free energy per turn. You need to get it back. Cards like this are too important. And maybe Tapu Coco here. Now, Tapu Coco's not really needed, but it's a nice non-GX attacker. The spreading damage is really fun, and it's a free retreater, which really helps after a KO. So, it's good. It fits. It's not amazing, but I, I quite like it nonetheless. So, let's finish off here by looking at the matchups. Now, against Gardevoir, this isn't going to be the easiest matchup ever, but you can one-hit KO with a choice band Kukui. And the thing is, against Gardevoir, they're really reliant on abilities. They're not going to be playing Ability Lock now that Hex Maniac has rotated. So you can really rely here on just being able to use Strong Charge every turn. Now, they might try and go after your Vika Volt, but just, you know, have a second one prepared. And you don't need a second one turn one. You need a second one like turn four or five by the time they're guzmering it for a KO. So you should be okay here. When you've got no energy on, they need... 
six energy, five plus a choice band, in order to get a KO. Doable, but difficult. You can use Tapu Wilderness to heal at least once. You can use Ace Roller if you're playing it to heal here. Because especially when you've got no energy on you, it's literally just picking him up to heal. Actually, Ace Roller's really good in this deck. Maybe play one or two of those. And like I say, you can get a one-hit KO at one point during the game. This is not some kind of 80-20 auto win. But I would say it's a decent matchup for you. Alolan Ninetales, I think, is a great matchup for you. You can get a one-hit KO on Alolan Ninetales with just a choice band. And I know they've got the baby Ninetales, hey Nick. But you can just use Vikavolt to KO that. So you'll be fine. Drampa Garb, you're getting a one-hit KO on Garboda without discarding the energy. You're getting a one-hit KO on Drampa either with the GX attack and a choice band. Or by discarding the energy. And just don't play many items. The big problem here is ability lock. That's what's going to really suck here. Because sooner or later you are going to have to discard the energy. If they've got the ability lock going, that's going to hurt. You've got Field Blower, but you're going to have to play very carefully. I think it's a very winnable game, but I think you're going to have to play very carefully. Similarly, Espeon Garb. Now, Espeon Garb's actually slightly more awkward because Espeon's got 200 HP. You can still get a one-hit KO, but you need a choice band and you need to discard the energy. You can do it with the GX attack of a choice band and a Kakui, but again, that's super awkward. So here, you're likely to be scarding the energy more often to KO the Espeon. Plus, they're going to be confusing you, which is, again, super awkward. The thing is, their damage output isn't that high. So you should have a couple of turns. And I think that should swing the match up if you can avoid the ability lock. By the way, I know Drampa can one-hit KO with Berserk. But you need free energy. They need free energy and a damage bench and a choice band. So, yes, Drampa can one-hit KO you, but again, when you're playing Garb Dramp, if they've ability locked, they've got a decent chance. If they haven't ability locked, you've got a decent chance. And if Drampa is trading favorably with Tapu Bulu, it's because there's a Garboda out. Volcanian Turtonator, you're one-hit KOing everything. They can one-hit you, but they need free energy on their Pokemon, and they need a choice band on Turtonator, but they've not got the same level of energy acceleration. So, again, I like your chances. It's awkward, because like I say, Turtonator can get a one-hit KO, but you've just got much better energy acceleration, and they're not going to be playing Ability Lock because of their steam-ups. And then Golisopod, one hit KO with a choice band. If they're playing Garb, it's exactly the same thing. The Garb's super annoying, but if you can have a field blower or avoid the Garb, you're probably going to win the game. The one big issue is Metagross. Metagross is a pain for this deck. They're one hit KOing you with a choice band. You're not one hitting them. Metagross is a rough matchup, especially because you're not playing Ability Lock. But I really don't like Metagross against... Volcanian Turtonator. So it's not like Metagross has no bad matchups. And this has an easier setup than Metagross. You need one stage two rather than multiple. So you can outspeed it occasionally. I do genuinely think there is a chance this is the best deck in the format. I've made my argument. Make your argument in the comments. Go nuts. Be nice. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wossie and Twitch at twitch.tv slash PTCG radio for some live action. We're streaming PTCGO at 7pm Thursday. Come join in. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, etc. You can do so at patreon.com slash PTCG radio. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.